Hey everybody, it's Ryan McCaffrey from IGN. We're up here at 343 Industries getting an early look at the Crimson Map Pack, the first downloadable multiplayer map pack for Halo 4. I'm joined by Mike Ellis, Design Director at 343. How's hey, it going, everyone. Mike? Hey, Ryan. So, uh, what are we looking at here? So, this is Shatter, and uh, it's a really good map for a lot of objective-based play. Thing for Shatter for me is all about controlling the channels that run down the middle of the map. I think if you get some guys with some long range weapons uh, able to control those channels, you can control the flow of the enemy and uh, in objective play that really is a big plus for you. Now we are doing, we're doing straight up Infinity Slayer here, so uh, we've got, what I think we've got six on six, mm -hmm. is that accurate? Um, so where are there, are we going to see some sort of natural choke points here where the action sort of gravitates towards this? Middle area, or does it tend to spread? Oh my goodness. And now we got a mech in play. <laughs> Never and this mind. is where things get really interesting. It's all about team play in order to be able to take down that mech, and the team that have the mech also want to surround it with infantry to prevent the uh, other infantry being able to disable it. So is this map called Shatter because it's going to shatter your confidence uh, as soon as that mantis shows up? <laughs> Pretty much. But aside from that, there's these beautiful natural crystal formations around the map that the mining company are harvesting. So there's a, a big strategy we're seeing here with, uh, with Halo 4 is you can really level the playing field with the vehicles by disabling them with the overcharged plasma burst. Uh, that even works well against the Mantis. Yep, I think that's a core tactic that every team needs to be employing is shut down the enemy's ability to leverage vehicles on the battlefield while keeping yours running by protecting them with infantry. So do you find it wise to, I know I do on my, my personal loadouts at home, to to spend a couple Spartan points on the plasma pistol and use it with just about or most every loadout for this exact purpose? Yeah, I think you get a lot of guys who really like using that plasma pistol as an insurance policy against vehicles. Me personally, I still like to randomize my play in order mm. to make sure I don't fall into any one set pattern. Right. And it really depends on the map and the game mode. Oh, wicked headshot there by our. Uh very talented 343 driver. So we're seeing a couple vehicles on this map, um, but really, it, it's it's all about the Mantis, is it not? If you, if you can control one or both of them, you're in good shape. Yeah, if this game's a, a game of chess, then I think the Mantis is definitely your queen. <laughs> and it's all about keeping that Mantis in play for as long as you can. So there's a ghost down, just sort of casually parked near the middle of the map. So we're gonna grab it now. And uh, the Ghost is a great little vehicle for picking off a lot oh of infantry. Oh my goodness, yeah, that. Right there we see, there was the shutdown from the plasma pistol yeah, and then the finishing off. The, the advantage of the Ghost was quickly made moot right there. A very talented uh, overcharge and then a plasma stick. As you can see, a lot of players also like to leverage the jetpack on this map because uh, there's lots of areas where they can gain some verticality and uh, so to try and trip other players up. You can tell that we are, we are actually at 343 in the greater Seattle area because the, the, we're playing against the testers who are all ludicrously talented. <laughs> they've, they've maybe been playing this game a little bit here and there. So as usual, as we see with a, with a lot of the Halo 4 maps, uh, there's, there's some subtle color coding in play to help you navigate around the map. We saw uh, blue highlights on one building, right? And then there's, some, there's uh, red markings on another to help, help you determine which part of the map you're on. Yeah, essential for navigating in um, Shatter is knowing whether you're on the light side of the map or the dark side of the map. And then in conjunction with that, there's also blue and red bases. You can see some of those markings here. Yes. And between those two things, you should be able to tell wherever you are on the map, which side you're on and which way you've got to go. We see uh, DMR, clearly a, a favorite in all of Halo 4, but particularly on this map. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's useful in almost every situation. It's a really versatile weapon, especially in a map like this where there's some of the longer sight lines. Well, you'll, you'll also see some players switching it up, and what they'll do is they'll stay to those uh, interiors and they'll try and reduce the sight lines and uh, wait for players to come into their space. Well, this match is moving quickly. We are already 
Got a, got a tight one going between blue and red team. And, oh, the teleport saving the day right there. We don't see a lot of teleports, teleporters in uh, in Halo 4. Like we, Halo 1 teleporters were pretty pop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, Halo 1 made a lot, uh, pretty substantial use of teleporters, and we've sort of slowly seen them fade away, but we've got a couple maps. Uh, wreckage, there's a teleporter, and, and here, what do you guys tend to uh, to not favor them for map flow purposes, or uh, what's what's sort of the, the pluses and minuses of using teleporters in a multiplayer map? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different pluses and minuses, as you said. Um, one of those being that it's very easy to get around a map. Uh, and suddenly pop up in one place. You saw a great little tactic before where the player stepped back into a teleporter in order to uh, save himself upon a shield pop. But the downside is sometimes if you have less experienced players, it can be very disconcerting to right. suddenly jump across a map and some players lose their ability to navigate. Mm. Didn't quite get the uh, overcharged plasma burst off there. So, uh, again, we are, we are playing Infinity Slayer here, but... Clearly, this map is going to be very friendly to fans of objective game types. Yeah, I think it's got a great layout. Um, it's symmetrical, though it's not, uh, it's not overly simplistic in its shape. Uh, you have the two bases either end that will act as your main focal points. And then um, those three main channels right down the middle are something you really want to fight over. But at the same time, no team can really lock them down because of the two side tunnels that players can very quickly come along and uh, flank someone's positions. So I think it's one of those classic maps where you really need to make sure you've got a good um, balance between offense and defense. Well, this, this is already, uh, this is gonna be a, a favorite for sure. There's DMR Paradise, plenty of objective game types. Oof. We're almost to the end of the match. So now we're entering one of those side areas I was ah, talking about before. before. You get this sort of darkened tunnel area between the light and dark sides that runs around the edge of the map. And that enables you to get to the larger bases. And what some players can do is go up the ramp you see here, and that will give you a good firing position down onto where the enemy are beginning to spawn or congregate. So you can see how that looks down onto the base. And that is an Infinity Slayer match on Shatter. Look forward in the Crimson Multiplayer Map Pack coming very soon to Halo 4. Mike, thank you. Thank you.